there's nothing like opening a can and um, seeing something that basically hasn't been seen for the better part of for the better part of 50 years. It is one of those rare finds. My hands were shaking. The kind of guy like Tony Del Grosso can spend his whole career hoping to come across. It's exciting. I mean, you never, as, a, as an archivist and a, a film preservationist, you always hope to find something lost. You hope to find something really exciting and to be the person to, to open the can and take the first look at that. Next week, the Dryden Theater will screen the U.S. premiere of Too Much Johnson. The 1938 silent film was directed by Orson Welles. That year, New York's Mercury Theater was going to stage a play of the same name, and the film was a multimedia experiment of sorts. What Orson Welles wanted to do was to interject some cinema into that and film some preludes to each of the acts prior to the actors coming out and performing on stage. This was his grand experiment. The film, which was never released, was found recently in a warehouse in Portanone, Italy. A team from the George Eastman House restored it. Obviously, we had to take extreme care and caution. Um, when looking at the reels, we really had no idea what kind of condition they were in or, or what to expect. The cans containing the nitrate print did have a little rust. And one can of film had to be shipped to a preservation lab in the Netherlands. The rest of the image is just in absolutely remarkable shape. It looks almost like it's new right out of the can. It's just remarkable to look at up close. Just how rare is the film? Well, the only other known print of it until now was believed to have been lost in a fire which destroyed Wells' home in Spain in 1970. We can tell that this was a work print. A lot of the splices were, were, were done in haste. Uh, the majority of the edits that were done on these reels were done by Mr. Wells himself by hand. Too Much Johnson received its world premiere Wednesday at a film festival in Italy. You can really see the shine on that base side of that film. There's no scratches. Knowing that Rochester had a hand in making that happen is a point of pride. It's a very important thing that we do here and we really like the, uh, the general population in Rochester in particular to know the resource they have for film preservation in their own backyard. Seth Voorhees, YNN.